Here we go. All right, this is a continuation of 6.1. I added in more uh, example prompts. That's why it's kind of like 6.1 and like 6.1. <coughs> so a rational expression, as we recall from yesterday, um, Jay, is where we have an expression on top and an expression on bottom. So we have a fraction, top has an expression, bottom has an expression. The one thing we talked about that was the big uh, takeaway was the domain was affected whenever the denominator could be zero. So if the denominator could be zero at a certain point, that needs to be excluded from my um, domain. So right here, we're just gonna focus in on the domain. We're not gonna focus in on range. Okay, you can use your calculator if you will. I think like it's nice to look at your calculator, but you don't need it. Remember, we had these asymptotes here. Okay, the domain were the vertical asymptotes where it cut through and split my graph up. The ones that were horizontal, they were actually uh, affecting my range. Okay, but we're only going to talk about the vertical asymptotes and I'm going to refer to them as, you know, probably such. Okay. So find the domain of each rational function. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of look at these and just identify the denominators, okay? Like if A, H the denominator and B, X, C is X minus two, D is X squared minus two, X minus three, E is X plus six, and four is X squared plus four, okay? And I am just going to set each of those equal to zero, okay? And I'm going to work through probably like two or three of these, and then I'm going to let you guys practice on your own. So in the first one, that's my denominator. Is that possible? Can eight equal zero? No. No. So what I would say with this is my domain is all real. I abbreviate it that way. Jay, you don't have to use that fancy R. You could use the words all reals, OK? Uh, so I'm looking for that, that, that word, all reals or that NPR. That means the numerator doesn't matter yet? No, numerator doesn't matter. That was me just talking about, like, that's where math goes, G. So, like, later on, we're going to be talking about, probably in pre cal trig, we'll talk about limits, okay? And limits, the numerator and the denominator, they matter and how they're related to each other, okay? But for this section, it's all about the domain. So I wanted to kind of like expose you to limits how far range it? and asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. What's that? Does it not be range then? No. So we're not talking about range. No range, okay? Just domain. No range. All right. Let's look at B. B is nice and easy. Identify the denominator. When, it, when does x equal zero? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory when x equals zero. So my domain would be all reals except x equals zero. Can't have x equals zero. Now again, we can't have x equals zero because if I plug in zero, I get four divided by zero, and that's gonna be an error, okay? If you were to graph it on your calculator and go to the table, it'll say like ERR in the table. Okay, so it's another way to do it. All right, and then C, the last one I'll do for you guys, and then I'll let you guys do the next three. X minus two equals zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two. I was really trying to show my work for you. X equals two, so my domain would be all reals except X equals two. Yeah. All right. Why don't you guys try D, E, and E? Two E's.
Do you apologize? Why not? Do you get D? What are the factors of negative three that add up to negative two? You even look at your notes. You don't? You don't know how I know you don't? You're just finding out where does the denominator equal zero? Jody? No, we're we're factoring. Yeah. So you factor it. You factor three goes into two. No. Number that goes into three and two. No, you're looking for the factors of negative three that add up to yeah, negative two. That's negative. Okay. All right, so I identified the denominator here. X squared minus two X minus three. And they set it equal to zero. This, J, was on the test, right? What are the factors of negative three that add up to negative two, J? X minus three is X plus one. Equals zero. Now what, Jay? X is three. And X equals negative one. So my domain is all reals except X equals three and X equals negative one. Make sense, Leah? Kaylin, pretty good. All right, let's look at E. Miss Puckett, E. What did you get for E? Is it just domain equals all reals? Well, when is X plus- Oh, eight? no, 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 sorry. I thought you were talking about the one under it. Yep. Is it just domain equals all reals except x equals negative six? Very good. And then how to actually give me how to actually give me this one, right? X squared plus four equals zero. X squared equals negative four. Is that possible? And Hannah was like, no, anything squared is a positive number. So I can't square something and get negative four. So she just said, domain is all reals. Justin, you okay with that? All right. Below it, you guys try. There are four questions right below it. See if you can figure it out.
Thanks for letting me know, Laura. And uh, thanks for the update, Nikki Grantland. All right, number four, Isaac. We're not number four, number one. What was the domain, Isaac? Can the denominator ever be equal to zero? What is four equal to zero? Is that true or false, Isaac? False. So Isaac, because four can't be equal to zero, my domain is simply all ribs. Okay. Yeah, if it, if it can't happen, then it's gonna be all real numbers. So your default answer is all real numbers. And then whenever it's equal to zero, you take that away. That's, why did I set it up like that? Okay. All right. And, and yeah. when is x squared minus four equal to zero? What? When is x squared minus four equal to zero? Um, negative two and two. Very good. So the factors of negative four that add up to zero are x plus two and x minus two. We set each of these pieces equal to zero. That gives me x equals negative two and x equals two. Therefore, my domain is all real numbers except x equals negative two and x equals two. Jake. Yes. Number three. Number three. Would it be? Um, would it just be x? Equals, it wouldn't it be dr, and then you just flip the sign. Jake, when is x minus three equal to zero? Um. Oh wait. When x is zero equal three. Yeah. When x is three, x minus three is equal to zero. So it's the domain is all reals except x equals three. All right, Mr. Woolery, yeah. what are the factors of six that add up to negative five? Uh, yeah. Well, negative six and one gives you negative six, right? I need it to be positive six. Five times one gives me five. Six and one would give me seven. When we add, I'll give you a hint. It's not six. Three and two. So x minus three and x minus two. Negative three plus negative two is negative five. Negative three times negative two is six. So x minus three equals zero and x minus two equals zero. That gives us x equals three and x equals two. Mean is all reals except x equals three and x equals two. Fair enough. So far, so good. All right. Okay. Some more examples simplifying rational expressions. You guys ready for this? All right. So, a lot of the stuff we've been doing is just factoring out stuff. Okay. So, now some things might cancel. So we have to prepare for that. Up here, we have a couple of different things. Okay, I'll be going through A, 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 B, C, and D. And you guys are gonna try one, two, and one, two, three, and four. Okay, so in number, we're in letter A. 
First thing I'm going to tackle is the 18 and 15. What goes into 18 and what goes into 15? Three. Three. 18 divided by three is six. 15 divided by three is five. Six over five. That's easy to see. Now, the x's. I have x's on top, x's on bottom. I have two x's on top, x squared, one x on bottom. That. So I'm going to cancel one of them, right? I'm going to do two minus the one. Two minus the one. That's one. Since it's positive, it's up top. If I subtracted the two numbers and I got a negative number, that would mean it goes down bottom. Okay. Now, if we look at y, okay, I have one y on top and I have four on bottom. If I do four minus one or one minus four, that's negative three, the negative three goes on bottom. The other way I like to look at it, because one minus four, I feel is harder to do. Would everybody agree that I have more y's on bottom than on top? So if I do four minus one, it's three, but I have more y's on bottom. I kind of try to think about it a little easier. Okay, I think it's easier to do four minus one than it is one minus four, and then deal with that negative. So I like to identify, all right, I have more y's on bottom. All right. Well, it would have to be up top for it to be negative three, but the directions are gonna say, write it with a positive exponent. Because just like writing like four over six, considered to be unfinished. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you guys try number one? How did you put them in front of each other? That? Yeah. It's understood to be there. Oh, so, so, wow. Why did you get positive? One minus four, Jake, is right. negative three. Yeah. Negative three means it would go on bottom. So I thought to myself, because it's easier to do four minus one, correct? So I thought to myself, hey, I already know there's more y's on bottom. Yeah. So if I can do four minus one, it's three. I get that real quick, right? Mm -hmm. And I already recognize I have more y's on bottom. I can just put it on bottom. So if we put it on the bottom, positive. Yeah. Sure. So if I do one minus four, Jake, mm -hmm. it's negative three. Yeah. When I move it to the bottom, it becomes positive. Oh, okay. Now, wait. Oh, okay. Do you want to do number one? Is that what you were saying, or are you asking uh, to go to the bathroom? Well, oh. huh. I guess that's what's right. Oh, okay. I might be able to do that. I need to fix it. Oh, so of course. All right, let's look at number one. Number one. Deal with those numbers. 24 over 16, eight goes into both of them. Three over two. Easy enough. X's, I recognize there's more X's on bottom. We agree with that? I have one on top, three on bottom. I think to myself, three minus one is two. So I have x squared on bottom. Z's, I have four on top, one on bottom. There's more on top than on bottom, four minus one. Well, that's three, because there's more on top. There we go. How are we with that? We okay? Um, Franklin, you okay with that? Yeah. I don't even know the sound of his voice anymore. Ed, you okay with this? Yeah. Kailana, you okay with this so far? Yeah. All right. All right, now let's look at B. A little different. In B, okay. We have some work to do. Now, if we look at B, I notice on top, it's a expression and they both share an X. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna start factoring and looking to factor things out. So 
I'm not going to worry about the bottom. All right, I'm just going to kind of color over that for now. So we're solely looking at the numerator. 2x cubed minus 6x. What do they share? Will they share a 2 and they share an x? Hey, do you see that? How they share a 2 and an x? I'm going to pull that off. 2 divided by 2 is 1. x cubed divided by x is x squared. 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. x divided by x. Well, they cancel. So the top factored for me to 2x times x squared minus 3. Now I'm going to bring that back in. Now we look at this. I have two on top and six on bottom. They can cancel. Two into six is three. X over X squared. It's going to be X. Does everybody see how I reduce the two X and the six X squared? Cody? Yeah. Are you lying to me? Yep. It's okay. It's okay to lie to me. Doesn't hurt my feelings. And I didn't do anything with the X squared minus three. Okay. Uh, Two and six, three. X, X squared, X. What? Well, two and six, right? Two over six is one third, right? Or, you know, six is bigger. If I do six divided by two is three. <coughs> that would be on bottom, correct? So do you see how I put it on bottom? X over X squared, X squared is bigger. So if I did two minus one, X would be still left on bottom. All right, you guys see that? Okay. Um, yeah, I forgot. Um, yeah, you guys can do number two. I'll talk about it later. Do number two. All right. Nikki Grantland. Yeah, I like do not understand this. Yeah, it's okay. Here we go. Nikki Grantland, don't focus on the bottom. Just focus on the top, okay? Okay. If I were to ask you to factor that out, what would you pull out of 8x cubed? And 4x squared? Uh, 2 and 4. Like. So would I factor out a 2 or a 4? Remember, um, you're factoring out one number. A 4. A 4. Anything else I could factor out from that numerator? Um, no. Do they share any letters? X. How many? Two. X squared. Yeah. Right, so you see that, right? 
four goes into eight and four goes into four, agreed? Agreed. X cubed, X squared. I can factor out an X squared from both of them, right? Yeah. So now I'm just going to do eight divided by four to get two. X cubed divided by X squared is X. Do you see where I got the two X from? Yeah. Okay. Four divided by four is one. X squared divided by X squared, that's one. Do you see where I got the one from? Yeah. Okay. Now, here, here's the only thing I'm doing here. I'm going to bring back into the equation the 20x. Do you see how what I did? Yeah, is that the, the end of the like question? No. Mm -hmm. Now I can reduce. OK, I can simplify. Nikki Granlin, do you see how I have 4 over 20? Yeah. 4 over 20 reduces to 1 fifth, right? Yeah. OK, so all I'm going to do here is add my fraction bar. On bottom, I have a 5, because that's like part of the 1 fifth, right? Mm -hmm. x squared over x. That reduces to x. Agreed? Yeah. So x squared was on top, x was on bottom, so the x goes on top, because x squared divided by x is x. All right? Okay. I'm kind of thinking to myself, like, x squared is bigger, so whenever I do that, like, like reducing, it's going to go where the bigger thing is. So since x squared is bigger and it was on top, then x is going to be on top. Now, I dealt, I just dealt with the 20 and the 4. I dealt with the x squared and the x, right? Now, the only thing I have left is this 2x plus 1. But there's nothing else to reduce it with. So I just write that down. Okay. All right. You guys see that? Yes, I do. Yep. How do I differentiate where it goes? Okay, so where we're going from here, remember I was talking about like asymptotes and things like that? There's like another thing, okay? And that's what I was gonna show you, but I wanna get through these last like four problems and then I'm gonna try and show you maybe tomorrow what happens when we divide these things out, okay? So something happens, all right? So you remember how I graphed, we had X's on bottom, we had that weird graph, right? And there was like those lines in it. Something happens here with these problems, okay? And we're gonna talk about that, okay? So Isaac, great question. All we're doing right now is just trying to simplify these expressions, okay? I can't. No, you wanna leave it like this. Just five on the bottom. Yeah. So you just want to leave it like this. This is going to help you guys out. If you choose to multiply that back out, will I mark it wrong? No. But this might make your life easier when I'm asking you questions about the, the problem. All right. And C. In C, I noticed, well, in the numerator, they both share Y. I'm going to pull that out. If I pull a y out from the 3xy, I'm left with 3x. If I pull a y out from the y squared, I'm left with y. On bottom, there's a 2y, not much I can do there. But now I see I have a y on top and a y on bottom. They're going to cancel. OK. So I have. 3x plus y on top. I'm just going to leave in parentheses. I think it looks nicer. Over 2. You guys try number 3. Oh, you do? 
Oh, okay. Um, I have an answer. Instead of back doing it, uh, can you just like add it together so it's like one? Like, you talking about like this thing? Like in the equation, it says like three x y plus x. Like, okay. Minus, yeah, I can't combine them because they're they're not like terms. So remember, like terms have the same variable. So because this has an x in it and this doesn't, they're not like terms. So they do not compute. Okay, good question though. My life would be a lot easier if you just combine it. Let's just combine it. All right, number three, it's kind of reversed, right? So now on top is going to be the thing I kind of ignore, but the piece on bottom is kind of going to be the piece that I'm factoring. On bottom, they both share an X. So I pull that out. Again, the whole thing is, is I just ignore the other piece so I'm ready for it, okay? Now, Here's the thing, a lot of you guys are gonna to wanna to cancel the y squared. You can't do that because it's addition in here. So remember, we can only cancel through multiplication. So the x's are the only thing that cancels. It's three y squared over y squared plus one. Fair enough. All right. D. In D, fun stuff's about to happen. Okay. As you can see, now I can't just ignore the bottom. Why can't I just ignore the bottom? Well, I can't ignore the bottom because well, I can factor. Okay. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore it for now. And I'm just going to look at the top. X squared plus 2X minus 15. What are the factors of negative 15 that add up to 2? Very good. We're going to write X plus uh, 5 and X minus 3. We cool with that? Now I'm going to look at the bottom 3X minus 9. What can I factor out of that, Leah? Three. We're going to factor that out. Three divided by three is one. So I just have an X. Nine divided by three is three. Ha! Look at that. Well, now X minus three is canceled. That's nice. That's why I always write things in parentheses. So I have X plus five over three. So why did you bring the five? What five? Oh, oh. What's that, Cody? Cody, what are the factors of 36 that add up to negative 12? Negative six and negative six. So I'm just gonna focus on the top, okay? You just factored the top one. You just said the top factors to x minus six times x minus six, right? Because negative six plus negative six adds up to negative 12. Negative six times negative six multiplies to give me 36. But now I, I just can't ignore that, right? I have to actually like take that into account. So what I'm gonna do here, Cody, is I'm gonna just bring that back into the game. But what do you notice? Same thing on top and bottom. So I can't, my answer is just X minus six. Oh. Okay. Now I don't have time to go over the next thing. I don't want to, you know, not give it the appropriate amount of time. 
but I'm pretty sure we have a couple more to go over. Okay, so I have a couple more. So tomorrow's looking like we're gonna go over these. And then um, I might start six two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, sir. Tomorrow is six two. No. Thursday.